talk about the appropriate techniques in initiating a sit-to-stand and then um, assisting someone with a sit-to-stand. It seems like a pretty straightforward thing, but there's a lot that goes into it to make a sit-to-stand more functional. Um, if we try to stand up from a chair without leaning forward, it's pretty impossible. You can't, you can't do it. Um, but the second that you lean your weight forward, scooch to the end of the chair, and get your weight over your toes and your knees, you can then start to lift your bottom up from the seat of the chair. Notice that it's not an upward um, lift, it's more of a forward lift, and then um, you're using your bigger muscle groups to then um, stand up. So when you think about that when you're assisting someone to stand, um, you want to use those same fundamentals. So you're going to want to have that person scooch to the edge of the chair, um, assist using um, their arms on the armrest if possible, have that person lean very far forward so their weight is over their feet, and then if you're providing assistance from the front, think about instead of lifting up on a person, which you'd probably be doing using a gate belt, but rather think about lifting um, at a diagonal forward and up. So think about a line coming out of my, straight out of my chest and going forward in the direction of a sit stand. Now we're gonna put those fundamentals that I just talked about into motion and we're gonna demo a sit to stand um, with you assisting some, somebody in the standing. So I'll have Allie uh, scooch forward towards the end of the chair. I have her lean forward, using your arms to press up from the armrests. I'm gonna keep a good wide base of support, or you can stagger, whichever um, is more comfortable to you, but um, you really wanna use your body weight um, and less of your arms when you're doing, when you're assisting someone. So we're gonna reach behind, um, grab the back of the um, gate belt. Sometimes a count helps. So one, two, three, using your body weight to shift back onto this back foot um, as I, um, pull to get Allie up onto her feet. Now we're going to demo the same technique except um, when someone's using a walker. It's pretty common for someone who needs assistance with standing, they're probably going to be using a walker. Um, so we're going to place the walker in front and it's really pivotal that we don't have them reach for the walker for support. This is a no-no because this is not stable, um, it's not attached to anything, it's going to pull, fall back onto the person. It's really a detriment and it's going to be worse for the person if they reach for the walker first. So we really want to make sure that we're cueing um, the people we're support to push off from the armrest of the chair. Okay. Um, make sure you're explaining these, you're giving um, verbal cues prior to um, attempting a sit to stand. Where hand placement is, is pretty much the same as when you're giving assistance in any other case, like walking. We're going to have a hand on the back of the gate belt, um, and you can also keep a hand on the front shoulder just to stabilize. Um, you want to keep a good base of support. Um, and your back flat, we don't want to round our backs or use our arms too much. So remember, this person is assisting you in this process as well. This is not a dependent lift. You're not lift, trying to lift the person up out of the chair. You want to encourage them to do what they can. Sometimes a count helps. One, two, three, push up. Make sure it's a forward push and not straight up. That'll make it easier for the person. Another thing is that I forgot to tell Ellie is a scooch to the edge of the chair. Um, and that'll also help um, this process go a little bit more smooth. We're going to talk a little bit about different styles of walkers that you might see. Um, so this one right here is what we call a front wheeled walker or a two wheeled walker. Um, and this is a rollator walker or a four wheeled walker. So someone who's using a front wheeled walker um, it's going to be a little bit less functional. They're going to need a little bit more support. Um, ideally, generally speaking, um, for sizing and height of the walker, you want to have the handles at the person's wrist level. Um, and you want their arms to kind of be at a, their elbows to be at a little bit of an angle when they're walking it, using it. Um, walkers should not get out in front of people. Um, they should stay close inside of the front wheel walker. This is um, so they can use their arms more effectively to support um, them when they're ambulating. So when someone's using a four wheel walker, they're gonna be a little bit more independent. Um, 
they're not gonna need as much assistance when walking, maybe not at all. Most people who use a four-wheel walker are pretty independent um, when using them. Um, they like to put their belongings on the seats. Um, they can also sit on this, but it's very important um, that when someone does attempt to sit on this, that it's up against the wall um, and the brakes are applied. Um, these brakes sometimes can be faulty um, and not work as well, so we really wanna be safe when someone is attempting to sit on a walker like this. Um, brakes on these are used mainly when um, trying to sit on the, on the walker or when going uh, down a steep uh, decline. Um, they can be operated by pressing the brakes or locked out by pressing down on the handles. So the last thing we want to talk to you about with walkers is how to safely transition with someone from walking into a chair. So I'm going to demonstrate with Tony. So Tony's walking with his walker and his gate belt. He's keeping his walker nice and close. You're standing next to him and slightly to the side. You're going to overshoot where you're going and then you want to keep them to back up until they feel the surface against the back of their legs. And then they know it's safe to let go of their walker. They can reach back and sit down safely. You want to make sure that people are always reaching back to where they're sitting.